I'm Jan de Vries. I'm a cloud solution architect working at a small consulting company in the Netherlands called 4.net. Uh, also a Microsoft Azure MVP, which means I do a lot of stuff in Azure, a lot of serverless stuff. And today my talk is about, well, DevOps, uh, migrating to ChatOps, working serverless, of course, because it's cheap. So, but first, uh, we're at the DevOps conference, so I guess you all know what DevOps is all about. It's about, well, adding value to your customers. It's about continuous deployment, continuous learning, continuous improvement. That's, that's what it's all about. And we all know this. And what it's, whoa, that's too fast. What it's not about, it's about, sorry. So we all know, know this, this cycle. So, and uh, and uh, I guess a lot of us know the planning, the coding, the building, the testing, and the releasing deployment. And then we get to the operation, operational part and the monitoring part. And a lot of companies I see, I, I'm a consultant, I see a lot of companies and a lot of projects, and a lot of times I see the operational side and the monitoring side are, well, suboptimal. They're like, yeah, we're sending emails and people are responding to exceptions and when customers are calling, we do something. And that's what DevOps is not about because that's, uh, that's costing the service desk a lot of time, picking up the calls, uh, answering to customers. Uh, you have to read a lot of emails with exceptions and stuff like this. Slow response times, not, not something you want, and this is not what DevOps is all about. We need to improve this, in my opinion. So let's get back to the old days, what, w what DevOps was about back in the old days. It was like writing tons and tons of documents. You needed a big, big card to ship all those documents. And when all those documents were shipped, we could finally ship the code, which took about six to 12 months. And then we had shipped the code and you needed a change. So you needed a request for a change document. This was in a time when prints and the rational unified process were, well, everybody was doing this. So not something we wanted. Luckily, most of us aren't doing this anymore. So this is old fashioned. So what a lot of companies are doing nowadays, like I mentioned, is sending a lot of emails when something is failing or status reports or when a KPI is not met properly, an email is sent. This is a screenshot from my mailbox of about two weeks of retrieving monitoring mails. And as you can see, there are a lot of emails over here. I haven't read them because I don't care. Whenever something has failed yesterday, I don't want to know it today. I want to know it yesterday. And I probably have fixed the issue yesterday because the service desk uh, came to me and told me stuff is failing, we need to fix it. So these emails are too slow. That's inherent to email. What's also not very useful is some of these emails look like this. An aggregation report of stuff failing. So I'm a Microsoft guy, so we're using Entity Framework, an object relational mapping tool, and these are all ORM uh, exceptions, fun, happens in the cloud, timeouts and stuff like this. But this is a report of yesterday. Who cares about what happened yesterday? We're living in a now. So this, is, this isn't useful to me at least. So and nowadays, uh, well, a lot of companies are still doing this. A lot of projects I met are still doing this, but I don't like it. I don't like it. So what we're doing now, because people are praising and hallelujah, we need, we need less emails. So you see a lot of popular blog posts on the internet. Yeah, less emails, yay, less emails. Yeah, that, that's great. So what do we have to do now? Well, what all of these geniuses figured out, we need to have dashboards. <laughs> like what? Dashboards? Who has time to check these dashboards all day long? 
At the moment, I, I'm working at a, at a customer uh, for some time now, and we have an operations team who is hired to check out these dashboards all day long with five people and check if something turns red. And when something turns red, they have to act upon it. Like, what? That's like five FTEs that cost a gazillion dollars per year to just check if something is turning red. You don't want this. This isn't DevOps, in my opinion. This is just getting people to work. It's, it's like not something you want. Of course, dashboards are useful, don't get me wrong, but it's not for exceptions, exception handling. It's for exception handling, it's just plain stupid. That's why all of the people around me are happy. Yay, dashboards. We're having people involved in it and we're having real-time uh, uh, analytics. And this is me being grumpy. That's why, I'm a, uh, that's why I'm an architect. Being grumpy is my job. So what do I think we should be doing? We should be doing something which is useful, which is meant for real time, which is messaging, of course. I guess you all have a smartphone. You probably all have Telegram or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, something like this. What happens when your phone does bzz, bzz, or ding ding? You look, you pick up your phone, you look, what has happened? Oh, I like or I retweet or whatever. That's what you do when a message is coming in. It's, well, it's one of the flaws of humanity nowadays, but it works. So let's use this, these mechanisms like Slack and Teams for this. Because most of these systems, uh, or at least I know Teams and Slack a bit, have integrated support for analytics, for tooling like this. Like I mentioned, I work in Azure, so we have this thing called Application Insights, which you can create awesome dashboards in, which are pretty fun to create. But then you also have connectors, which are able to post messages to Teams when something is failing. So when a service is auto-scaling up to 20 instances, you probably be want to know this at this time, because maybe it's suddenly Black Friday. So you want to know this. Yeah, yeah, you can't expect uh, Black Friday, of course. So, or maybe there are like 10,000 messages on your service bus queue. You probably want to know this, because maybe something is sleeping or, or not picking up these messages. So you want the message from this right now. Not an email a day later, because then there might be a gazillion messages on the service bus or on a dashboard. You have to hire people to focus on these dashboards. So this is useful. Still, this is the out-of-the-box functionality you get. Blah, 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 alert has been activated. Blah, blah, blah has deactivated. Not very useful, or at least, nah, it, it works so-so, but I'm missing some context over here. So what is useful? Well, creating your own messages a bit. Like, yeah, I have an alert, an Azure Monitor alert set up. Whenever there are like 100 messages on my service bus queue, I get a message like a warning, uh, this resource ID, uh, the entity, and, well, how many messages there are on. And I even created a cool button, fix it because when something like this happens, you want to fix it. Drop the queue, recreate it, whatever you want. Yeah, indeed. No, 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 the fix it is whatever you want. And that's what makes this chat ops thing awesome. Because you can do anything you want behind this button. So how do you create this? Well, it's useful if you have an event driven system. Because when you have an event-driven uh, system, event-driven uh, solution, you already have a couple of APIs with queries on it. You have some commands. You're probably publishing some events somewhere, like Azure Event Grid, or uh, AWS has this new uh, uh, Event Grid thing also uh, since, a, since a couple of weeks, which is awesome if you want to use this. Also, regular, regular messaging, like for service buses, you can all 
respond to these things. If you're still stuck in a monolith, uh, which has its advantages, which I have some strong opinions on, uh, but that's for later. Uh, if you're still stuck in a monolith, you can also do this. You don't have to have a completely decoupled uh, microservices system. You can also do this in a monolith solution, which makes it even easier, in my opinion. So, but how should you be designing this if you go microservices in Azure? Well, first of all, you need to have some service. Uh, over here, I've drawn a small cloud service, uh, a backend worker doing its stuff, doing the things with some, with some timer jobs, picking up messages from a storage queue, working on it, and then something happens. I don't know what, but something has happened. Some command event handler has emitted, something has evolved. I'm posting this to event grid, and event grid is a big, big service uh, used to handle a lot, a lot of messages. Trillions, I guess. So over on event grid, you can subscribe to certain topics. Uh, a topic is, uh, well, comparable to any queuing system uh, we have nowadays. Uh, so we have a topics and we're subscribing to this, this failed event. Uh, I've drawn a, a small, uh, another storage queue over here. Uh, the storage queue is, is the destination for the failed events. It's posted one-on-one -on -one over there and an Azure function is picking this up. You could also draw an, uh, an AWS uh, Lambda over here, but I'm using functions. And this function is posting the message in Teams. So, and there you get in Teams a nice message stating your service bus is full. Your SQL server is failing. Something has happened. So, okay, now I'm notified. Cool, now I can do a manual task of logging into the portal, finding out the re which resource it was actually, uh, copy pasting GUIDs uh, all over the place. You could do this, but a smarter, or at least in my opinion, a smarter solution would be to create some API with creating a fix it button over here, which calls some API. And this API is handling uh, this, this command really fast and posting the command on another queue and another Azure function will pick up this recovering command. Why do you want to have this, this web API uh, responding really fast? Well, because I want to post a message back to Teams saying I've pressed the button. It's being, on it, uh, it's being handled. So this is being handled sometime. It might take a couple of minutes. Maybe you need indeed to delete the service bus queue or delete your AKS cluster and recreate it, which is a bit dramatic, but it could, it, this will take a couple of minutes. Uh, so the recovering command is being handled and this uh, function uh, will also post a message back to the event grid saying, yay, all is fine or not, and it has failed again, and you can respond to it again via a message. So that's all there is to it. Easy, right? Well, if you're into it, it's, it's not very hard, but just getting over here is, well, takes a bit of time, and you have to think about what's useful. What do I want to post on this event grid and what do I want to post on Teams and how do I fix it? Because if I can fix the issue with a normal API call, why haven't I fixed it over here? Great question. Because uh, I came up with this design uh, when my operations guy came to me and he, t he said, Jan, I'm getting dozens and dozens of emails uh, per day saying the database some database didn't get deleted by my, uh, my, my job over here. We had some service deleting databases uh, all day long, uh, which customers wanted to have removed. And sometimes this fails. Happens in the cloud, stuff is failing. So we 
Of course, we retried this for a couple of times. I believe it was five or 15 times. But after it has failed 15 times, we probably want to get notified by it and doing some manual action, or at least having insights in it. Because if this happens a lot, and w we have like 100,000 SQL databases in Azure, and deleting 20 of them failed per day, about. Uh, so 20 isn't a lot. It, it's like in, in low percentages. Uh, but still, it's annoying if you have to go to the portal and fix this stuff yourself. So what we did is we had added some channel in Teams, some insights. Uh, we had some insights and uh, created an API endpoint, which did a hard drop uh, of, of the SQL database on the SQL server. And this worked most of the time. And if it didn't, we just got a new message stating it failed again. And that's the time when we want to log into the portal and see what's happening. Most of the time, Microsoft called us in these situations. Yeah, like, you're a big SQL customer, right? So we're having some issues. You probably noticed this. Yeah, we noticed this. So uh, this is uh, once you get into this and into the whole event-driven uh, architecture and solutions, this is awesome. Just let me show you how awesome it is when using functions. Let me just move this over here. So I've started up Visual Studio. Let me duplicate the screen. Where's my mouse? So what I have over here is I have a, a small function. Is it readable in the back? Yeah? Yeah, it's English, so it should be readable. Uh, so what I have over here, an Azure function uh, with an event grid uh, binding, uh, well, with, a, with an event grid binding. And whenever something is happening on the event grid, uh, I'm collecting uh, the stuff and I'm posting it to Let's see, a timer trigger, and I'm posting it to event grid. A timer trigger with an event grid output binding. So every, well, couple of seconds, some event is being posted to event grid with some details on it. So this is how you would do this in, an, in a serverless fashion in an Azure function. A couple of lines of code, and that's all there is to it. You can also do this, of course, inside a regular application, a console app, a web API, whatever. Uh, then you probably want to have this event grid uh, b uh, binding code uh, created yourself. I've created an uh, output binding uh, and put it on NuGet, so you're all free to use it, this, this binding. Uh, but that's up to yourself. If you're using functions, I would advise using this, uh, this uh, binding. Otherwise, just create your own. So, and the monitor, what I'm doing over here, I have an Azure function with a, with a storage queue trigger. And whenever something is placed on the storage queue, um, I'm posting an HTTP uh, message to a webhook. Teams and Slack also works with, uh, can work with webhooks. And you have to post some JSON to it. And it will be shown up inside your message. So what I'm getting over here is the event grid message, deserializ deserializing it, creating some JSON from it, and posting it, and be done with it. So easy enough when using functions, of course. So in the brow in the in Teams, this looks a bit like uh, like this. It depends a bit on uh, how your message is uh, being created, but as you can see. I have some data over here, a nice icon, which you have to scale a bit uh, yourself, uh, and, and some data. And you can even post uh, 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 commands like with buttons uh, uh, over here. So let me zoom out. Because if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, post a, or have a, a button in it, uh, fix. Failing service bus. Let me check. The fixed button is this. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Oh, I've removed it in this in this uh, branch, but uh, you can uh, add uh, commands uh, to this in this JSON. It's all documented on uh, on the the doc site. Uh, you can even create awesome awesome cards for in your teams, uh, depending on what you want, with jumbotrons and hero messages and even flight schemes. So this is this is great stuff. Not all of them are necessary for your DevOps, your ChatOps uh, uh, stuff, uh, but it's cool. But you can uh, you can post uh, uh, create a button over here which is posting well uh, contents to some API endpoint um, and, and the fix a failing uh, service bus uh, action well an API or an HTTP triggered Azure function could look like this I'm getting some data uh, I know what the body is because I've just sent it via Teams and the messages are from uh, myself. Uh, so I'm doing the stuff with the things and sending back a message like it's being handled. That's all there is to it. You have to say, yeah, I want to update the original message. So you get a message, uh, it's edited in Teams with some, with some uh, data in it, if you're interested. And I still have time. Um, I, can, I can look it up. Uh, I have to scroll up a bit. So fix the stock service bus, and with a bit of luck, you can see it's being updated. So uh, some data, who has updated it, so which is useful. I'm in a Teams context over here, so Office 365. So I'm sending out my o Office 365 token to my backend, and it's getting a response with the same data, of course. So I know who has pressed this. This is useful when some someone has pressed the delete all of the databases button. So you want to know who to blame or who has pressed the button. So this is also why you want to respond really fast so you don't have five people pressing the same button all at once. So respond fast and the action can take several minutes if you want, if you decouple this via some, some uh, uh, some queue, but that's all there is to it. All of this code is on GitHub, so you don't have to make photos of, of the code. It's, it's on GitHub and you can just clone it. Is there other stuff which is useful? Well, uh, the JSON, I'm using T4 templates. It's been like 20 years since I've last used them, but uh, it's useful when you have some some variables you want to post in your in your uh, JSON because it's just a big string. A colleague of mine began with creating a big string and f a string replacing some placeholders in it. I was like, yeah, yeah, remember SQL injection? Let's not do this. So just using T4 templates is good enough or better in my opinion. Uh -huh. And that's all there is to it, to create messages inside your, uh, inside your uh, uh, Teams channel. Now there is one small caveat, of course, because remember this stuff, like getting thousands of emails per day or per week. You don't want to get thousands of messages in your Teams channels or Slack channels, because then you have the same problem as before, just in a different communication uh, 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 channel. So what do you want to have? Well, creating those messages is the first step. It's uh, getting the team familiar with uh, messages, with teams, with, well, chat ops. And then you can create better messages uh, with better bodies, with better notifications, with maybe better buttons like not having a button delete my cluster, but maybe fix the actual problem. And creating bots. Because who likes it to who who likes it to press the button fix my cluster all day long? No one. Bots do bots like this. Repetitive tasks, bots are born for this. So what you want to have is bots uh, acting uh, y using some AI mechanism like, oh, I see a lot of uh, 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 SQL Server uh, um, 
uh, events are happening right now. Let me fix, let's, let me press the button myself. And if this fails, yeah, maybe some operations guy should look to this. But the bot can do the initial pressing by itself. So that's, that's the next step. So first, now you want to create those messages in, in your Teams channel. And next week, you want to create the bots handling this for you. So you can improve your velocity and well improve your stability of your overall system. So that's where you want to go. I'm still busy creating uh, these bots. Um, you can follow me on Twitch, struggling create, uh, you can see me struggling to create these bots because it's not as easy as, uh, as just writing bots everywhere. You actually have to do something for it. Uh, so you can follow me. Uh, I, I'm doing some live coding every now and then, uh, but you can also wait for the blog post on, on my blog. Or uh, if you want to know more about this, just reach out and I'm happy to help or answer or do something with it. Um, that's all for now. I hope maybe there are some questions. There are. Oh, before cool. that, we want to make sure he gets the right applause. Please make some noise, John. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, two questions in here. Oh, three. And then uh, just, uh, just added another one. So let's see. Let's see. Let's start with the first one. Do you turn off notifications in non-work hours? Do you still receive all the messages you know, on your private phone 24-7? So well, I'm a consultant, so I'm not allowed to uh, uh, connect to the production system. Mm -hmm. So I'm not. But some of my uh, internal co-workers at the, at the project uh, are. They have like a, a DevOps duty. And they have to be uh, on call 24-7, so they get, indeed, the, the messages uh, sent to them. At the moment, uh, whenever we have like a, a, a rise of fatals in the logging, uh, an exponential rise of fatals, so the delta is, uh, is too high, uh, they, uh, they get a call out, uh, so we send out a post, we post a message to Enterprise Alert. I don't know if you are familiar with it, uh, but Enterprise Alert sends out uh, a text, or we send a message to Enterprise Alert, and Enterprise Alert calls the DevOps uh, person on, on call and reads aloud the, the text message. So those people are on call all day long. Yeah. Thank you for that one. Uh, we have another one. OK, there it is. What happens if you receive uh, hundreds of messages? Don't we have the same problem than with the emails? Yeah, I hope I've answered this with my last slide. Uh, but indeed, you don't want this. You won't have bots solving this for you. But in early stages, when beginning with this, this solution, you will have hundreds of messages, or hopefully not, but potentially you have. And afterwards, after a week, you get annoyed by those messages, and you create a bot for it to handle it. I hope this answers the question. I hope it does. Uh, so uh, we're, uh, we're um, running out of time. We want to make sure the next speaker uh, is uh, ready for uh, one of, uh, I think, the, um, the last, yes, the last, uh, last session of today's uh, conference. So ladies and gentlemen, once more, please make some noise for John. Thank you.